Hello people, this is Bear from Barrier Collector, and today we're going to continue one of the most loved series, and that is expected back value of a given set. You may ask, Barrett, everyone does it, there's many other people doing it. Yes, but do they include PSA graded cards into the model? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to briefly, as you can see, take a quick look at the set, and that is Temporal Forces, and then we'll dive into the data, see what these cards are selling for, see the pool rates, and then at last see what they go in a PSA 10, PSA 9, and see what is the expected puck value after considering graded cards. So, as I said, this is a video series that I've seen um, has seen some love from people. So if you want to go watch it, I'll leave the playlist on top of my face as as usual. There's been it's been done on Lost Origin, it's been done with uh, Baldi Evolved and a Fusion Strikes and a few others. So Go check them out if you enjoy this type of content. And um, also, before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to the Discord. If you enjoy Pokemon investing, if you like about Pokemon collecting and Pokemon in general, as well as other TCGs, then I highly recommend to join, no matter if you're in the U like myself, or in the US, Australia, or whatever you are in the world. Everyone is welcome. We're growing. We're happy. So if you want to have a good time, feel free to join. Link in the description, as well as we are going to have a Two box break of temporal forces we're going to open two sealed boxes and i'm going to announce those box breaks both here on the channel and on the discord so if you want to stay tuned then uh, either subscribe or join the discord so into the video so again briefly want to touch on the the main cards of the set we have 10 sirs six are pokemon for our trainers as you can see here I don't want to go over it too much because that's not the, the main point of the video. I just want to go into the data. There there will be other videos about them. I don't want to talk about what happened with the Iron Crown, especially in the US. As you can see, we are on the G player. And then uh, I got to I gotta be honest, I'm a huge fan of all six SIR Pokemons. I'm biased, but uh, I like them. I like the artworks and I can't wait uh, till they get cheaper. So... We have the Ace Packs, uh, the most expensive Ace Packs, as you can see, is Prime Catcher. And uh, even though, just want to say, even though pull rates, especially for, uh, I mean, mainly for uh, SIRs, are tougher, but you add value, there's value into the box with uh, Ace Packs. So you're going to see that in just a second once I get into the data. And uh, obviously the, the main uh, illustration rares are the, is the Ghastly, and then following the Sinnoh, there's also Metagross, which is also, uh, I think, a Gorge Artworks, and eventually I will look to pick one up for myself as well. A card worth mentioning is the Gengar Ultra Rare EX Full Art. So enough has been said, let's dive into the data. So here we are. I honestly don't want to waste your time. If you just want the number, expect to provide value per pack with raw prices, is one dollar and sixty eight cents. Expected back value after grading is three dollar thirty one cents. So if you just wanted the number, there you go. If you want to know how I came to these prices, so that you can also make your own models whenever you want, just by copying the process, then I'll recommend you stay. And if you furthermore want to listen to the assumption that you have to make in order for these prices to work, then I also highly recommend you keep on watching. Otherwise, I don't want to hear Barrett, but how can you make these assumptions and graded cards? Blah blah blah. I'm gonna say it in just a second. So as you can see here, I wasn't lying. There's more, and again, they're all on the channel under a playlist. So prices are of TCG player. One thing that's worth mentioning: European prices are a bit different, especially when it comes to SIR. They're cheaper in the EU right now than they are in the US. That's worth saying especially as I like to focus on the European market um, myself. And then the pull rates are from TG Infinity, which is affiliated with TG Player. And they opened, I actually don't remember off my head, I think it was 8,000 plus packs, but I'll link it, I'll leave it uh, right here as I'm talking. So that's where I got the data from. But as you can see, I've only considered into the model Anything that is a double rare or higher, I did not consider regular rares, uncommons, nor commons. Now, one thing that is worth mentioning is that in the uncommon slot, there's uh, an item, which is Buddy Buddy Puffin. If I'm not mistaken, that is worth 
a bit over a dollar. So that also adds a bit of value as well with all the bulk that you can get when you open a large amount of packs. So enough's been said, let's get into it. So here simply get every card. I now added anything into a nice table so it looks better, I hope. Let me zoom in a bit so you hopefully can see better. So double rare, that's average price of double rares. So you, you sum all these numbers, you divide it by the number of them, that's the sample mean, and we're just going to call it the average. So I've done the same for every here rarity that you see displayed. So the average ultra rare price is $3.56. When it comes to ace packs, $7.61. When it comes to illustration rares, it's $3.70. When it comes to hyper rare, it's $13.50. And when it comes to SIRs, is $45.13. Now, attention, that does not mean that the expected value of an illustration rare is $3.70 out of a pack. We're gonna get to that in just a second. So, hello people, it's me again, I did it again. You know I like to be as precise as possible, that's the main focus of my channel, so you'll forgive me, I forgot to mention a very important assumption, that is, every car within a certain rarity slot has the same probability of being pulled than all the cards within the slot. What does it mean? Let's take a double rare. Every double rare has the same probability of being pulled. It's called equally distributed. So I'll give you a furthermore example. Let's take the Iron Crony X double rare, pulling an Iron Crony X double rare has the same probability of pulling any other double rare in the set, equally distributed. That's also very important when you calculate the average of a rarity slot. Sorry, back to the video. Considering raw prices, you have the rarities, that's the pull rate, and that is the rounded per pack ratio. So you should find, on average, a double rare every six packs. Now, these are much less precise than these. Why? I, I don't think this is the time or place to talk about it, but just Trust me on that. Look it up if you don't, but I can assure you these are much more precise and that is why we're going to do calculation with these numbers. So this number right here is the expected value you're going to get f out of a pack given a certain rarity. So the expected value from a double rare rarity out of one pack is 15 cents. Same thing for an ultra rare, 24 cents. Ace pack, 38 cents. Illustration rare, 29 cents. Special illustration rare, 53 cents. Worth mentioning, this is the lowest pull rate that you have for an SIR in the Scarlet Varita so far. I won't be talking about that. I'm not going to go over it. Hyper rare, which is, as you may already know, is harder to pull than uh, any other rarity, is 10 cents. So if you sum all these up, you're going to get the expected value per pack. It means you open a pack, on average, what you should expect in terms of, of value is $1.68. Now, this number is going to change if once price is just, and it, it should happen, I'm expecting it to drop, then this value should drop lower. Now, PSA graded reports. So this set is extremely new, and uh, these are the pop report, it almost makes me laugh. I feel sorry about you, but these are the pop reports for the cards that you see listed down here. So these are going to change. They're going to increase drastically. So I'm just displaying them to do my calculations. These are going to change. Everything is going to change. All these prices are going to change. Everything is going to need to be updated in uh, a while, and we'll do that. I'll keep you posted but I'm just doing this for entertainment purposes, and I'm also going to prove a point in just a second, if you allow me, after I explain here PSA graded cards. Now, one thing I always say when I do the PSA graded reports, I've only to take PSA 9 and 10s, and in order for this calculation to hold true, I'm assuming that everyone, including ourselves, we're going to pull a card. In this case, let's take the Iron Crown. We're going to pull Iron Crown out of a pack. The pack wasn't damaged, so I, I'm assuming the, the card is not damaged, and I'm going to send it to PSA no matter what. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to do what it's usually referred to as pre-graded myself. I'm just going to send it. 
And in order for this data to hold true in our model, I'm assuming everyone else that send them to PSA to the same. Is is that plausible? Is that true? Absolutely not. But that's what I need to assume in order for these data to hold true into my model. Otherwise, I would just be talking and lying to you all. So that needs to be said. If this part is not clear, let me know in the comments. I'll try perhaps to make a, a whole video about it so I can explain better what I mean. So yeah, let me know down in the comments. But I say this in every video of this kind. So without wasting too much of your time, I looked at 130 point. So EA Bay last souls. I tried to look for auctions where possible. I, I got to say, I think it was the Salvatore. No cards were sold yet on eBay. So I just estimated. And uh, of all these prices, I've take I've taken the lowest number I could find. So the lowest sell. And again, these prices are going to drop. I'm pretty confident saying that. I cannot say 100% for they're going to drop because I do not know, but I can say with a certain degree of confidence they are going to drop and everything is going to go down. That has to be said. So here's the expected value uh, after grading of a given card. In this case, let's say I'm just going to give you how I did that just for the Iron Crown. It's going to work the same for all of these. So how do you get this number? You can see it right here. You take the price of a 10. You multiply by the probability of getting a 10. What's the probability of getting a 10? In this case, for the assumption that we've made, this number divided by the sum of these two. And then you add price of a 9 times the probability of getting a 9. What is the probability of getting a 9? Same thing. This number divided by the sum of these two. You do these for all these cards. And then what do you need to do? Well, it's very simple. What you need to do is the same thing you didn't hear. Now, the average of a given rarity, in this case, let's take the SIR, now it's going to be the result of the average of the prices after grading. Now, in this specific example, we considered all special illustration rares. So it's going to be simple. There's 10. You're going to take the 10 prices, sum, sum them all up, and then divide it by 10. That's the sample mean. We're going to call it the average. And, um, and once you do that, you then again multiply the average by this number, and you're going to get $1.54. Now, as you can see here, unfortunately, this is Italian. If you don't trust me, you can uh, go on Google Translate. This right here means average. So you do this for all the cards that you consider. Now, in this specific example, I also added the Ghastly Illustration Rare and the Gengar. I didn't add anything else. I could have added the Saucebach and the Metagross as well as Encino as because there just weren't any. So perhaps again, I will update this model and I'll let you know. I'll make a so that we can work with more um, accurate and reliable data. And uh, that's what he comes out with. Now, you may ask Barrett, well, if you're going to have to do it again, if you're going to have to update it, why did you do it in the first place? You just wasted time. Well, you could say, well, at least you made a video, you made some content. That's true. I'm not going to lie. And I also announced the box break. I'm not going to fool you around, guys. That's part of why I made this video. But what you can get the value you can get out of this video is, as you can see with this number, and again, these are short prices. So people were willing to pay this much. Now, what I'm going to say is going to apply more for American people than Europeans because you can obviously send cards to get graded to PSA easier, much more easily and with a lower grading cost because obviously we need to ship to the US. And by the way, I added here a $15 grading fee. You could assume that the people that send them probably paid a bit more. I don't remember if it was 30 or 45 to have uh, about a month turnaround time, even though I heard that, uh, especially these days with the lower tier, the I think it's bulk tier, it's called. Sometimes you also get uh, approximately a one month turnaround time. So you could actually subtract 30, 45 to these numbers and this price is going to drop a bit. But the main takeaway is, as you can see, if especially for stores that are going to get product off distributors. So at a very low entry price, Brian, definitely below this 
number. If you open enough packs, on average, if you send your cards to get graded as fast as possible, you can make money. Now, does that mean go ahead and do it? Absolutely not. I'm saying people that have a very low entry pro point and they can afford to open a lot, and I'm saying a lot of packs, on average, you can make money if you do it as fast as possible. Now, that being said, let me know down in the comments if you have any question, I'll try to address them as accurately as I can. Hope to see you soon on the Discord. Hope to see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.